What's up guys, this is Tech It Out, and today we are going to be upgrading the mid-2011 iMac CPU to an Intel Core i7. So, let's get started. So now we need to start by putting one suction cup on the left side of the glass and one suction cup on the right side of the glass. Now I'll put both hands on the suction cups and pull the glass out and then up. So now you're going to need some needle nose pliers as well as a six point screwdriver. Now we need to remove the four screws on the left side of the LCD as well as the four screws on the right side of the LCD being super careful not to touch the LCD with our hands. I would highly recommend wearing a set of gloves while doing this process as if you get handprints on the LCD they are very difficult to remove. So now we need to pull the LCD out of the iMac. I would recommend leaning it back so it doesn't fall. So there are two cables on the left side of the LCD and two on the right. So as you can see, there is one cable here in the top left of your iMac. There is one a bit further down on the left side. And then there are actually two right behind the middle of the LCD. So now we need to unscrew these two screws for the hard drive. Now go ahead and disconnect the SATA and power connectors from the hard drive. You have now removed the hard drive. Now we can go ahead and remove these three Phillips head screws from the bottom of your iMac. Now go ahead and use one hand to hold your iMac still while you use the other hand to remove your memory by pulling on the tab below your iMac. Don't be alarmed when it takes just a little bit of force to actually get them to pop out. Okay, so now we need to start by unplugging all the cables, starting with those three on the right side, then the four in the middle. Then we have two right there by that fan. And then there's two more by the fan on the right side. And then we have one cable in the middle of the iMac, which you will also have to remove the tape to remove. All right, so now we've got an assortment of screws across the iMac that we're going to remove. I would recommend just following the video carefully, starting from the left of the iMac all the way to the right. We've got quite a few screws we're going to remove. And now we are going to remove the four screws surrounding the disk drive. So now with some finessing, you can go ahead and start to wiggle the disk drive out, kind of pull it out. You may have to remove a little bit of adhesive along the way, and then you have to unplug the cable. Now we can pull this fan up and out of the way. Okay, so, okay, you're, so you're also, also going, going to need to unscrew this, this screw right here. here on the CPU mount of the and iMac, then and then the screw right up here. in the top right. Okay. 
So now at the bottom of the iMac, we need to go ahead and remove that piece of tape that is covering up the IR chip. So remove the tape and then pull out the IR chip at the bottom of the iMac. Now this cable we need to squeeze the left and right side and pull the cable out. Now very, now, very carefully, carefully we are going to have to unstick, unstick the, the cable, cable from the motherboard. motherboard. Okay, okay, so now, so we, now need we need to take, take off these, these four bolts, bolts for, for the power, power supply. supply. Okay, okay, so, so now, now you need to remove, remove this piece of tape, tape here, and now and you now should be able, be able to pull, pull up on the power, power supply. supply. Okay, okay, so now, now on the back side of the power supply, we've got this big power this clip. clip. First, we need to squeeze the clip and then begin to wiggle the connector until we can pull it out of the power supply. And then there is a second smaller connector on the back side of the power supply that we need to disconnect, and then you can fully remove it. So now we need to remove this screw right here. And now we can remove this chip entirely. The three wires can actually come unplugged, but I would not recommend removing them. Okay, so now we should be able to pull on the motherboard and get it to detach from the iMac slightly so that we can see some of the cables that are still hanging on to the back of the motherboard that we will need to detach. Taking a closer look at the back of the motherboard, we will find four power cables that we need to disconnect. So now with those cables disconnected and some finessing, we should be able to completely remove the motherboard from the iMac. Okay, so just make sure when you are handling the motherboard to be extremely careful as it is very fragile. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the IR chip from the back of the motherboard just to make it easier to deal with. Okay, so now to perform the CPU upgrade, you are going to need your five-point screwdriver. Ignore the Phillips head being used to hold the Phillips screws in place, as that is not necessary. You only need to remove the four five-point screws on the back side of the motherboard. And now we got to unscrew this screw on the heatsink. Okay, so you should notice a CPU sensor on top of the heatsink. Make sure to unplug that from the motherboard, and then you can remove the heatsink from the CPU entirely. Now we see that the bottom of the heatsink is covered in old thermal paste. Make sure to remove that using a scrape tool in your toolkit. So now, so now you should you push, push down, down and out, and out on, the on the CPU, CPU socket, socket arm, arm and, and that, that will allow, allow the CPU, CPU socket, socket to, open up. to open up. Okay, so now I have my new Core i7 CPU prepared and ready to go. Now we need to gently take the Core i5 out of the motherboard and then replace the Core i7 into the motherboard using the same orientation. It really can only go in one way. Just make sure not to press down on it too hard or you can accidentally bend some of the pins. So now it is time to close the CPU in its socket. Pl close the socket first and then push the arm down and then you have to push it down and to the right. Don't be afraid if you have to apply some pressure to the arm, it is completely normal. So now we need to clean the surface of the CPU and then we need to apply our thermal paste. Keep in mind we only need to apply about a tiny little dot onto the CPU. So now it is time to replace the CPU heatsink back onto the CPU. Make sure when you press down on the CPU that you try to do it as evenly as possible so that the thermal paste spreads evenly. So now we need to go ahead and screw down the CPU heatsink. You can go ahead and start with your first screw. However, when you screw in the rest of them, make sure to do it in a star pattern, meaning going from that right bottom corner to the top left corner, then to the top right, then to the bottom left, just so that it actually sits down evenly on the CPU. And we can screw in our last screw here on the CPU heatsink. 
So now your motherboard is completely reassembled. Just make sure to plug in the chip that we unplugged earlier. And now it is time to get the motherboard back into the iMac. We have these four cables that will have to be plugged into their according spots. They are going to plug in. One is going to plug in right here on this connector. One is going to plug in here. One is going to plug in here. And one is going to plug in here. So this wire goes like this in this orientation. It almost looks like the wire is facing backwards or upside down, but it is not. Okay, so as you try to start setting your motherboard down into the iMac, before you do anything, make sure that all the cables that need to come around to the front of the motherboard are out of the way and are not going to get stuck behind it, as well as the DVD drive SATA cable. Make sure that that can actually be accessed once we put the motherboard in. Just basically any cables that you need to access, make sure that they actually come around to the front of the motherboard to be plugged in. I almost forgot to plug in the CPU temperature sensor, so make sure not to miss that one. Okay, but before you place the motherboard fully back in place, there's just one thing. There is a small black and white cable coming from your DVD drive, and you need to try to run that under the motherboard to its correct place. But if you forget this step, it's okay. The wire will be able to be run over the motherboard. It just looks better and is a little bit neater if you run it back under the motherboard. Next, we need to plug in our IR chip. It may take a few minutes of fiddling around with it to get it to fully seat in its place, but you will know when it fully sits down because it will kind of pop in and it will just look and feel very comfortable. Next, we need to grab this audio cable and plug it back into its proper place on the motherboard. Make sure that the connector is fully seated in. Then you can take your hand and kind of just press it against the motherboard so that it will sit against it as opposed to just flopping around in the iMac. Now we can go ahead and pop in the little chip and screw in its screw and then screw in the screw on the top of your iMac for the GPU heatsink. So now we can reinstall our power supply. First we need to go ahead and plug in both power cables and then we need to take this little mount and make sure that it can run under the two thin wires but that the power supplies cable actually runs under it as you can see here in the video and then we can just seat our power supply how it is supposed to go properly. All right, so I accidentally screwed up and unplugged my DVD drive so that cable is no longer run behind the motherboard as I previously discussed. But now it is time to plug in our fan. As you can see, it will actually plug into its own little connector there labeled ODD fan. And it only goes in one way, so if it doesn't go in, that means that you've plugged the cable in or you're trying to plug it in the wrong direction. Okay, so now looking at your fan, there is a cable that has to go under this little crease on the fan just so that it sits down properly and doesn't actually smush any cables. So, so now you can go ahead and put down your fan into your iMac. It might take just a little bit of finessing, but just make sure that no cables are covered up that are not supposed to be. And once your fan is down, this wire is for your SD card reader, so if you would like to make use of that feature, I would recommend plugging it into your motherboard. So now that our SD card reader is plugged in and ready to go, we need to plug in these three wires. Now none of them can be exchanged, so really you just have to plug them in where they fit into the motherboard. So now we need to go ahead and screw in the fan. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plug in our disk drive and then try to pop it into place on the iMac. It's going to take some finessing, but it is very doable. All right, now let's go ahead and screw in the DVD drive. It is important to note that your thickest screw that came off of it before will go on the bottom left of the DVD drive.
All right, so now all that is left to do on the motherboard is screw in the logic board screws. So we have this screw, this screw, this screw, and this screw. And on the left side of the motherboard, you're going to have your longer screws, and then the two right screws are going to be the shorter ones. Okay, so now that our logic board screws are in, let's start plugging in these connectors. Now I'm not going to actually say where all they go, but you can kind of just follow the video and see where they are plugging in. Also, these are non-interchangeable, so they can only really go in one place. And then we can plug in these two cables on the bottom of your iMac. Okay, so for this next part, I would recommend laying your iMac down for the LCD installation. We have a connection here, 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 and here. And I would also recommend wearing gloves just so you don't get fingerprints on your LCD. So now you need to stick your LCD in just like this, and I'm going to turn the iMac around just to make it easier to work on and a better view for you guys. So now it is time to plug in the four cables of the LCD. So once everything is plugged in, I would double check to make sure that everything has a tight connection and then you can go ahead and lay your LCD down. And once your LCD is laid down, it is time to screw in all four screws on both sides of the LCD. I would recommend having your needle nose pliers nearby because the magnets on the screen tend to want to take the screws from you and sometimes it will make it easier to retrieve them using the needle nose pliers. And once your LCD is screwed in, you can stand your iMac up, grab your glass, and put it on the bottom of your iMac, and then allow the glass to just simply snap into place, remove your suction cups, and you are ready to go. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, and if you're feeling like it, also leave a like. As well as if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching this. Catch you in the next one.